Hey guys, this is Big Vito LaGrasso. That's right, the skull. I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm over here at the Wolfie D Podcast. Guys, make sure you catch it. And if you don't know what's good for you, you better know what's good for you. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D Podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one more time to the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. And today we have a great episode planned. One of our most popular episode types. It is called Ask Wolfie D Anything Part 3. Now the first two are one of our, you know, highest rated episodes for some reason. That's, I like that. I mean, that's very cool to me, really. I yeah, mean, we've man. had some super super guest on this show and to know that it doesn't even take one of those guests to get listeners that that's awesome to me and i'm i'm very humbled by it i know i mean dude it's kind of you know like because you think we've got hall of famer jerry lawler hall of famer ricky morton hall of famer coco beware i mean al snow whacker i mean yeah we've had some good people to know that these episodes are getting more listens is just it's super humbling to me very very much so you and i want our listeners to know uh, that means a lot to me yeah man and thank you for sharing that with us because you know it's good for them to hear it too you know our most recent episode raw is pg-13 we do a watch along with the first two raw matches that you guys ever wrestled you know the numbers doing great so far so thank you all for that honestly all they have to do is when they're listening to it click on the show notes the match will open up and they can actually watch and listen at the same time it's really super cool super easy also they can do it on another device Device. If you have it on your TV, that's the best way to do it, of course. But it's very simple, and it actually enhances the episode by watching that match along with us. Now, theoretically, you don't have to, but at the same time, why not take Ladies, full advantage of it, you know? If you're looking at what we're talking about, let me yeah. get my insight on <laughs> Yeah, Wolfie D's doing his best Lance Russell. It's awesome. <laughs> I get nah. to be Corey Macklin. <laughs> <laughs> Flip stuff over and down on Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's I swear, but he did not know the name of any move. And that's one thing that, like, I think it was obviously me and Jamie, but then I saw, I think it was Brian, too, our little clique there, would always poke fun at him because he really did not know the names of moves. And he'd be like, oh, there he goes. And he flips up over and down on him. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, that's kind of what made him great, if you think about it. Wasn't no Lance and Dave, but he was a good substitute when they went there and he was no Gordon Soley but Corey was a good guy and I like rest in well, peace what I liked about yeah for sure rest in peace uh, what I really liked about him was he kind of gave the real person's approach to wrestling you know they're, they're you know fisherman suplex or, or, or German suplex or you know anything like that right. he's going to give the real right. risk I've never thought of it that way but I mean I guess unless you're just a diehard, you don't know what some of these moves are. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> just said it like that. Come yeah, in here yeah, those he was... tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Anyway, definitely rest in peace to him. Would have loved to have had him on the show, but anyway. Yeah, what a uh, messed up way to, to go. If anybody doesn't know that story, he was on his way to a wrestling show. Tulane Road and car wreck. Man, that's depressing. That's really just is. sad. Yeah. It makes you think all of us could have easily been in that same position, you know. Uh, but I bet anyway. I shouldn't have got away from. <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah, dude. Seriously. On the road. Um, uh, I'm not just talking about that. Like, on the road. I've been so, I mean, I think I've told you I've been ejected once. Yeah. I mean, I. And I was telling my girl this the other day, I have been in my lifetime, I think the number is like 15 car wrecks. Oh my God. <laughs> One was an ejection. 
I mean, just some bad stuff, man. Rollovers, uh, and somehow I'm still here. <laughs> I, well, hey, and then that's not even counting the car wrecks every night in the ring. Uh, you know, the five mile an hour car wrecks every bump you take. You know, uh, that's yeah, absolutely uh, your body is pretty tough. Well, anyway, all right. Little housekeeping: the two pack of the pint size all stars from Pro Wrestling Loot are with Wolfie right now. Stocks yep. are flying. I think you're going to the post office just about every day right. Right now, so guys, seen, don't. I definitely yeah. uh, like a few orders and, and try not to go every day, but yeah, every other sure. day or something, I go out there and, and mail them out. So understand, guys, I'm paying the shipping and, and putting them in there and, and doing the work. Yeah, I mean, and he's a one man army right now, you know. So keep in mind that, but at the same time, get those figures right now. I mean, seriously, stock is is not going to last long. So definitely jump on them right now while you can. They're just so cool to see you guys in little plastic form. It's just crazy to think about. You know, and then the other thing, Pro Wrestling Tees really can pick your favorite and buy it. Definitely, you know, all great prices too, between 19 and 25. Average t-shirt on there is 25 and more. So we like to keep our t-shirts at a good price for people. We realize, you know, you have a lot to choose from and we really appreciate it when you choose us. So thank you all so much for that. Yes, do so, appreciate it. you know, yeah, definitely. And the podcast world, you know, you have to choose from. You know, we, we got some sponsors and they've done a great job for us. We appreciate them. Uh, Benji Bowie, my boy Eric down at uh, Coach's Bar and Grill in uh, Spring Hill. Pro Wrestling Luke got them too. Yeah. And I feel like some people think, oh, well, I don't have a product or I don't have a business. They can donate. They can just donate right. if they want. Yeah. Because I've had so many message me and be like, man, keep it coming, keep it coming. I love listening to you, blah, blah, blah. Donate. Help me out here. This yeah. Free stuff here. It's even though it's free to you, it's not free to do. Actually, right. It's, right. It's hard to do. And uh, to keep it going, we need some sponsorships, man. We do. So if you just want to donate, you don't have to, you know, buy a figure, buy a uh, eight by ten, buy a t-shirt, something like that. You know, help us out here if you like what I'm doing. And I and like yeah. I said, I'm humbled by the people that are doing this for us. Absolutely. Coach's Corner Sports Grill is awesome. Great food. You know, Benji Bowie, Pro Wrestling Loop, we love y'all all. We're always working for more sponsors, but at the same time, just like Wolfie said, you know, money keeps us going on this, and we're blessed to have the listeners that we do, but at the same time, you know, if you got a little extra something, it would all go to the podcast and to making the podcast better. I know Wolfie knows how much time I'm spending on it, how much time he's spending on it. Really, we're trying to make all all the best content for you to listen and hear just more about PG-13 and Wolfie D and Slash and the new church and all the cool things that Wolfie did. Like he said, though, the, the sponsorships really help keep the podcast going. And, Ooh. you know, we're going to do our very best. You know, back when we first started, we had nothing. We were doing this on our own. But when the sponsorships came in, we were able to up our quality on things to honestly do more things for you. Just, you know, keep supporting us. We thank you all so much for what you have supported us with so with that being said let's get this going baby awa is what i call it but it's ask wolfie d anything part three hey folks to get your official live and in color with wolfie d merchandise go to pro wrestling tees.com forward slash live wolfie d check it out If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. You ready to go? You you want to do this, man? You yeah, got this? I, they're always tough, man. I, I know it. I mean, because some of these questions, I mean, that the fans are giving me are so deep. It's like I really have to think about it for a second. You know what I mean? I, and, I, and I appreciate that because that means they put thought into it. So Yeah, definitely. And the farther we go and more that you reveal, the questions are only going to get more hypothetical, more deep. But, hey, we're going to have fun with it. And, you know, yeah. So, you know, we'll start with this one first. 
So Devin from your current state, so Devin from Kentucky, basically his first question is, who is the worst payoff guy? The owner, the promoter, a time you felt you earned more? I mean, is there you know one specific time, especially the worst payoff? And I mean, now you're in the twilight of your career, you know, what can you say about the worst payoff person or the worst payoff promoter? Well, okay, so... I guess when I first got started, I actually, as far as Tennessee area, Kentucky, all that kind of stuff, I actually got paid pretty good for what I was, which was nothing at that point, as compared to what I'm pretty sure everybody else was getting. Right. And is it? And I still say this, and I love Randy Hills to death, but I think we got better payoff when we got on top, but I still don't think we got what we deserved as far as what we we were doing so yeah. that one right there i'm just because i know i know i know that uh some of the other folks were getting a little more than us and we were the ones that were over but then they were the heels and they were over and you know what i mean it's like right i don't know kind of look back on it and you go mm, i should have got more than that but yeah whatever yeah nowadays I just, I set my price. I didn't have a price back then. I mean, you didn't, the business, uh, for me anyway, maybe some guys did, you know, hey, this is what I need or whatever, but I was just happy to be there, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. I didn't have a price. Yeah. Just give me the best you can and let me do the best for you. But, you know, nowadays, you know, if they don't want to pay me, I'm not coming. I'm not. <laughs> so yeah. uh, the worst payoff would probably be, and like I said, we've talked about this before. I guess if you really break it down, the worst payoff was, I mean, most people make thousands on WrestleMania. And right. we didn't because of the getting fired and blah, 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 blah. And we've talked about that where, you know, Sean and Jim Ross chased us out to the car and said, come back in here and do this. So if, if you compile what we got when we didn't work still two grand for WrestleMania. Come on. <laughs> so yeah. that was, that might be worse, but then also there's those, you know, Memphis sometimes when we first started $40 payoffs, those suck. Yeah. And then, you know, just some of the indie stuff that, you know, I don't think I've ever took less than 40 bucks, but yeah, I mean, it's what it is, I guess, you know, around right. here, it's different. It's different in Tennessee. I swear the fans, they don't buy as much gimmicks. So I understand that the, I feel like the promoters don't make as much down here. You right. go upstate, you go up north, you make more money because the people will pay more. So it's yeah. like, I, I get it. But uh, yeah, it has to be something down here. I mean, and I, and I didn't do that for long and I still won't do it. I'm just supposed to stay home. And I get it, man, because I would say at certain points, you could probably kick yourself for not setting a price earlier. Because I know the Absolutely. feeling. I was, yeah, I was in a rock band for years, and I, a lot of people don't know this about me. James Rock Street on YouTube, you can hear all this old crap. But at the same time, when we started to set our price, it was like, okay, people said yes. And it was like, God, I should have been doing this five or 10 years earlier right. because I didn't believe in myself. But at the same time, you were probably just like happy to be there partially, also not wanting to rock the boat too much. And also, yeah. Yeah. You, you guys were top dogs in some really lean times as far as, you know, for Memphis, you know, certain times because WWE and WCW were on Monday night. So people were staying home instead of coming to the Coliseum as much. Anyway, I can see where you would probably want to kick yourself earlier and saying, hey, we should have stood up for ourselves much earlier, you know? Yeah. I mean, the way the times have changed, like the way I got my news, honestly, about other stuff that was going on. Oh, well, I knew back in the 90s was what we were doing in Memphis in those six days a week, what we were doing. The only way I got other news was Meltzer sheet. And yeah. I didn't see those. I mean, that used to be a thing where it was like, oh, somebody's got a Meltzer sheet. Let's look at it. Yeah. And so you, yeah. The stuff, it wasn't the internet. It wasn't where you could see it. In, in, right. And in, in like it is now, like everybody can see everything going on. Even the like dumb guys are doing dumb shit. You can see that, but you can't see the good shit that's going on. Back then, it was just, oh, let's read this sheet that Meltzer puts out and see what's going on over there. Right. And that's what we got. So I, I really had no clue back then as to what the rest of the country was doing. Yeah. So well, that makes sense. You know, that, that's how I didn't know 
like I said, I was just happy to be there, man. Just living that dream, you know. Totally. I mean, totally. It's, it's how it is. And then that pretty much answers the question. <laughs> you know, Randy, I know you're still in contact with him, but, you know, but you're being honest about it. So we'll leave that answer alone and, and go on to the next one here. So I'll say this because yeah. Randy made PG-13. I want right. to say that. I want to be out there. Randy Hales made PG-13. But at the same time, he spent money on our opponents to make us. That, yeah, that makes sense. Question number two for Ask Wolfie D Anything. This is Sid from Facebook. So this one, you know, I think we've answered some of this, but we'll repeat this for Sid here. So number one, his first question is, what match or matches were your best? Or, you know, what was your favorite match that you were in? Uh, like I've said before, for different reasons, I have different matches. I, have, I There's matches that ain't even on tape uh, yeah. that I've had with Sid, me and him. Hell, I've had great matches on some indie shit that I know is not on tape. But as far as the ones that like really meant something, it was the Texas Death Match with Rock and Roll Express. Tracy comes out at the end, busts the bottle over Jamie's head. That was a fucking classic to me in my. But also, then you got to think that the uh, you know I wrestled for the WWE or WWF Championship, the Smoking Guns. It was a good match. It was a good match. So yeah, you got to show uh, yourself. Yeah, those are the ones that, like, meant something to me, you know? Makes total sense, man. Okay, and his second question is, the scariest moment for you in wrestling? Was there a moment that was like, holy crap? Uh, I think we talked about this, too. There was a time when I was, like, 16, and it was in Kentucky, and the finish was, I got this dude, I think in a sharpshooter, a Boston Crab, something like that, and this dude runs out, and he's supposed to throw powder in my face and blind me and whatever, and he put it in a photo, one of those old black photo things he put film in. He put the powder in there, and instead of yeah. opening it and putting it into his hand and throwing it and make it spread everywhere, he... uh Opened the top and threw it from the oh, man. from the uh, container, and I was blown up. I was blown up, and uh, when he threw it, I was inhaling, and so baby mm. powder in a big chunk went down my throat. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't breathe. I really oh, could not. Breathe. I was gonna die, and uh, I threw up in the ring to get it out. That's the only way I could oh, uh, breathe was to throw up. So yeah, that was pretty scary. Yeah, that's frightening, dude. I mean, it's hilarious to think about, it um, is, but it's, oh my God. But it's like, why is he so dumb that he wouldn't just, but but that's the thing, man. Some of these guys, and even back then, man, this was like, this was probably like 1990, maybe 91. But even back then, that's when the business was changing and nobody got trained right. It's like, right. this some bitch did not know to dump it in his hand and throw it to get the appearance of all the, you know, spread of the whiteness and all oh, it went in his eyes, blah, blah, blah. No, this motherfucker just chunked it in my throat. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, dumb. God. Yeah, yeah, seriously dumb. I mean, you know, because the cloud, the, putting it in your hand and spreading it, it's going to make it look like there's so much more exactly. instead of this that, flying white that, ball. The, that is the theatrical effect of the powder gimmick that yeah. doesn't exist. Anymore, but that was, you know, back then you threw powder in somebody's eyes. Oh, shit. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the theatrical effect of the powder, it needs to go everywhere so you can fucking grab your eyes and sell and back reel and all that kind of stuff. This motherfucker just threw it down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. My dear God, that is so funny. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so that is pretty much definitely the scariest moment, even though we're laughing. I that think it was. I'm trying to think if yeah. there was anything more than that. I mean, there's been a, the there was one night where I, I bladed too hard and my head would not stop bleeding against Paul Diamond. I super glued it and bulged up and busted through the super glue, and I had to go to the hospital. Stuff like that, but I don't know. That was uh, I'll never forget that man because I thought I was suffocating. I mean, think about it. Yeah, a photo bottle full of baby powder down your throat. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Especially when you're blown. Right, man. 
<laughs> oh, all right. That tops it of all time. Okay, so our number three question, at Jason Thomas 21 from Instagram. Now, this one is a little bit, you know, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about it. If we have, I'm forgetting. But basically, your trainer, Gypsy Joe, and your buddy, mm-hmm. New Jack, they had that infamous incident. Yeah. I think they were working for Mike Porter or Burt or somebody like that. Anyway, do you have any insight on that match or what went wrong? Or? Man, I, I, I wasn't there. I don't really know. Um, yeah. I've watched it, and yeah. I hated it on a couple of levels, man, because I feel like, like Jack should have respected Joe more. And at the same time, you just can't. If Joe would have been younger, I'm not sure that would have happened. And, and but if that was going on, if Joe would have start wailing on him at that time, you know, Jack might have hurt him more or something like that. And I, I, I just I hated to watch it. I really did because yeah. I, yeah, obviously Joe did a lot for me, and I liked Jack. But at the same time, that was just it was fucked up, man. I didn't like it at all. It was hard to watch, and yeah, and just. Man, I don't even know why that had to go down like that. It could have been uh, Jack being, I'll just say Jack being Jack. Man. Sensitive, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. It sucked to watch that. It really did. It, it hurt my feelings because, honestly, like I, I obviously respected Joe, and I know he's tough as fuck. I mean, who else yeah. fucking took at that age? You think about that. He was about, what? Almost seventy years old at that in that match, right? And think about your grandpa getting yeah. hit that with a bat right. and all that shit. Who else wouldn't have gone to the damn emergency room? Like seriously, right? Right. That's a tough right. fucker. He, he's always been tough, and that just it made me think like, damn, everything I've always thought about this dude is like true. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, the tough. The son of a bitch ever. I mean, he got right. hit with a bat, like, shoot bat shots. Yeah. Fucking, he survived it, and he took yeah. it. You yeah. know, and not the fact that he, okay, he didn't get up and fight back and all that, but you're talking about a 70-year-old man and, what, he, New Jack was probably, like, what, 30-something at the time? Right. So <laughs> that he took that tells me that even though he, he kind of took ass whooping, but... And and New Jack didn't hit him in the head or anything like that, but still, what seventy right. year old man can get hit in the back, in the chest, and everything with a fat and chairs and all that shit, and walk away from it? You tell me that. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know one old man like that. Honestly, I mean, they. I just mean, don't think make about it. Crazy. Yeah. You think I'm serious? Walk outside to your local Walmart and look yeah. at the people that are that age or whatever, and hit them with a bat one time. Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. The ambulance is being called. Yeah. And he took it's, multiple shots. And I, did that bat, it had barbed wire on it or no? I don't know. I don't remember that part of it. Yeah. I, I didn't like watching it. It, it hurt my feelings yeah. because, like I said, I liked both of them. Right. And I knew that was going to be a tough question for you because of that. You know, the thing I would say is everybody talks about the row of chairs that Jack kind of, like, throws on him. But I was like, the bat is the hard stuff right there. Yeah, there was the bat. He fucking yeah. hit him with the bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he fucking yeah. whacked him with that bat, man. Believe me, oh. I'm fucking hurt. Yeah, it has and it to. Said, I'm 48 right now, and if you hit me with a bat, I'm going to the doctor, man. <laughs> right, right, dude. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's pretty much that about that. I, I I knew that would be a tough question for you, but you know, you were honest, and I appreciate that for sure. So, our next question. This is from Sam Squanch One. <laughs> Sam Squanch One from Instagram. I can't make these up. So, <laughs> the most fun you've ever had in wrestling. A time period that you were just having, like it was just all fun. Every bit of it. Do you remember I mean, the time? Night- Obviously, first bit of the 90s getting into USWA, but then those mid-90s where we were drawing and, and doing all that, and me and Jamie were working for everybody. Yeah, right. that was so much fun. We had fun on the road. We had fun before the match. We had fun in the match, all that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So basically the 90s, <laughs> and you yeah. know, you guys. 
you know, on top of the world. So that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool answer there. This is is one thing, too. If the Internet would have been a thing back then, yeah, you know, people say, like, we're underrated and all this kind of stuff. If the Internet would have been more popular like it is today, because people are now starting to recognize what we did, but if it would have been a thing back then, God, it would have been so much different. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, you guys, the Briscoes, and I know I talk about them a lot, but honestly, you guys would have been the Briscoes that the way they are now because they're kind of everywhere, you know, like they're always tag teams that they wouldn't ever get to wrestle because they just talk about them. And that's how y'all would have been. You guys with a, a – can you imagine y'all with a camera phone? <laughs> like, seriously? <laughs> Could have been some jail time. (laughs) Yeah, that would have been funny. Okay, so that's cool. All right, so number five. (laughs) This one I didn't share with you because this one is ridiculous. But basically, there is a joke question that goes around all the podcasts that started on something to wrestle with, with Bruce Pritchard. Conrad Thompson loves to ask this. And somebody at Gray Warrywart on Twitter has asked you, and again, how big is Batista's dick? <laughs> Honestly, I have no clue. I really have no clue. And I don't know why I would know that. I mean, but yeah, I have no clue on that. Yeah, I figured. And I His knew that's what you were going to Wallet is way bigger than mine. <laughs> the wallet is way bigger. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, number six. Now, this one is our buddy. This guy, Tim Fox, at Strongman Storytelling. He follows, likes, loves everything that we do. Probably the number one fan. We get him some T-shirts, you know, buy a few T-shirts and show us them guns in the T-shirts, Tim. You know, we appreciate you, though, for sure, for always coming through with some great questions. So here's the one that I think a lot of people may be curious about. Where did the Wolfie D name come from? The wolf, of course, is the easy part. But what's the V well, stand for? Is it inspired yeah. by Ghetto Boys Willie D? Go ahead. It was nowadays we know what that stands for, and yes, I'll go with that. But um, <laughs> when it, when I came up with it, it was just the same thing I talked about before. When I came up with the PG thirteen name, all the rap stuff in the eighties, there was Heavy D, and, you know, all these guys. Yeah. And, Everybody, like when I first started as a kid, I was Airwolf, and they all just called me Wolfie. So I said, okay, yeah. Wolfie, and then yeah. let me put a letter at the end of this, and the only one that sounded right to me was D. Right. But now we know what D means, and <laughs> we know I, I'll stand with that. <laughs> There's <laughs> quite a few ladies that know that letter, too. Anyway, <laughs> all right, number seven. Answered perfectly. Thank you, Wolfie. Number seven. So, at Ed the Fed, this is from Instagram. So, when training someone, what are the things you look for in that person initially? And then what will make them successful? Basically, the things that you can see initially in someone, obviously, what would make, well, you know, is. Soon, uh, you know, because I trained, I ran the USWA school for a little bit, and then I had my own school. Yeah. And then even just wrestling guys, as soon as I lock up with you, I know if you're going to get it or not. I mean, there's just a thing, man. A thing, there's a feeling. I've wrestled guys, trained guys that were, you know, college athletes and stuff, you know, successful in, in this or that. I've wrestled those guys that were Olympic bobsledders and all this kind of stuff. So great athletes, but there's something about wrestling that is a little bit different. Um, and it, it, it's the footwork, it's the timing, and just, I don't know how to explain it. It's very hard to put into words of, if I lock up with you, I know whether you're going to get it or not. And uh, some of them, I, I feel like I could teach them a little bit and uh, alter whether I thought they were going to make it or not and kind of lead them on their way. And it's no bullshit that Kurt Angle was one of the first people and The Rock, too, that, like, their first matches were with me. Yeah. And I could kind of feel it first. The Rock, like I said, I've I've told this story before, was horrible. God, he was horrible. But from, uh, I guess... Tom Pritchard and, and stuff like that. He he changed Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's good off the off the get go. When they when they brought him into uh, Power Pros, me and him had that little angle where it was the hubcap hanging around my neck, 
and his gold medal hanging around his neck. We did a little angle with that. He was good from the get go, man. He just he, he felt good or something. And I just believe it's you know if you ever watch wrestling, you know there's just certain ways that a wrestler walks around the ring. First of all, if you don't get that, uh, that's one thing I can't stand when I see dudes like walk the ring or go to lock up and look all I don't know weird or something. I don't know. There's just a way a wrestler yeah. does it. And, right. you know, there's certain guys you can just see that from. If you can't hit the ropes right, that's that's another thing. That's one of the first things I always taught people is how to hit the ropes because you don't understand how much those ropes hurt, first of all, and they're going to bruise you up the first times you do it. And if right. you don't jump at them and, and hit them, they, they want to, you know, some of these people want to walk up and, like, touch them. Yeah. No. You got to get into that shit. So that was one of the first things people how to hit the ropes and then how to lock up and i said the lock up can be the most important part of the match yeah you see you see guys lock up that it's light and it's like like again it's one of those things that's very hard for me to explain but i always told them i said it's like two bulls there's two bulls and you see them fixing to hit each other or rams or whatever they're fixing to hit each other that lock up needs to be like boom it needs yeah. to hit hard and then loosen up. Right. Yeah, and I mean, that's it, man. You know, and by the way, Wolfie invented the lockup by God. That T-shirt I did. is available on Pro Wrestling Tees right now. I Go mean, listen to that episode. <laughs> uh, Brian Christopher invented the Sunset Flip, by the way. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and and rest in peace to him, you know. I know it was recently his birthday, so rest in peace to Brian Christopher. Yeah. That's pretty much it, man. I mean, that, that you know, you kind of get that feel, a good, snug lockup that looks real match. I just yeah. believe that at the start of the match is two dudes that are sitting there looking at each other and, you know, like everybody a day, you know, UFC, blah, blah, blah. They might, okay. So what do the guys do at first? They're sizing each other up, but in our business, we'll size each other up and then boom, give me a strong lock up and then let's work that. And then let's go to the little shit and then we'll get the big shit in. That's, that's yeah. the way I think about it. Um, so the you got to get, yeah, that's it. All right. So that's a pretty much the great answer right there. So here is at Larry, the one, at Larry C one. We'll, we'll go with at Larry, the one, any other ideas for gimmicks other than slash. Now I know you're a gimmick guy. But did yeah. you have another idea other than Slash after PG-13? Was there some that you, you were like, nah, maybe not that one, but the Slash one's my top one? Well, I mean, uh, we've talked about, the, you know, the cyberpunks, all that, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, uh, I always like crazy over-the-top shit. But no, uh, after PG-13 split, I really didn't have a clue. I was just like, Ugh. And then... That rollover ejection, uh, you know, car wreck happened. And there were so many people that believed that that slash on my eye and that white contact was caused by that. Yeah. For some reason, I was like, okay, I'm going with this. And I called Cornette. And I said, hey, uh, I want to do this. Uh, let me come up there and, you know, develop this. And uh, like I said, it was it was slash killing at first because it was in my mind it was like a, a psychopath serial killer. And he's like, drop the killings and just be slash. Yeah. Okay, that's what that's what I'll do. And that's when I rode that Greyhound bus up there and developed it in OBW and then went to TNA with it. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, we're glad you did. Obviously, that's such a cool gimmick. Serial killer, psycho, love it. It's such a cool gimmick. So, All right, the next one is Joe from Knoxville. <laughs> and this one you may not want to answer. You may not be able to answer just because of the knowledge of it. But what's your body count? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, <laughs> that means I, I mean, think... people are uh, killed? Thanks, buddy. No, no, maybe maybe ladies you oh. killed. <laughs> uh, um, I'll tell you what my girlfriend thinks, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that one. It's a good amount. Yeah, we'll just go with that. I think that's a good amount there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe from Knoxville, quit being so damn nosy, man. <laughs> a good amount. I think 
I think everybody gets the picture on a good amount. So, I mean, are this we talking like four numbers here? Are we talking triple digit? I mean, what we, I mean, just, three okay, three numbers, maybe a high three there. So, all right, cool. <laughs> There's one time when, uh, oh Lord, uh, me and Jamie go to these two girls' house and I go back in the bedroom and she starts screaming, oh God, oh God. <laughs> Jamie said, I'll help for you now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's where the camera would have been hilarious, but not in the oh, you know, in the act there. But, you know, Jamie's saying that would have been hilarious. All right. That, that, we'll get you out of trouble here now, this next question. So, SVD Productions on Twitter, you've said that you were considered a carpenter in the ring. So, other than you, who would you consider to be some other great carpenters? Like, if there were, let's uh, say, a Mount Rushmore of carpenters, you know. Oh, there's been a lot, man, because... My definition of that d- does not mean who is pushed because right. you can go from carpenter to a, to a superstar with a push. Right. I mean, right. a carpenter to me means you're a good wrestler. You can do everything. So, right. man, I, I don't even know how to say that, man. You can just be a good wrestler and then that push, or even, even with that push, you don't have to be that good, but... A good carpenter, I mean, you got the Malenkos, you got Eddie Guerrero, but then he got the push. And, you know, there's so many people that are just very good technicians, man, very good technicians. And to yeah. me, that's what that means. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, like Bobby Eaton, you, you know, you're, you're oh, Arn yeah. Anderson's, you know, but yeah. it's, there were so many. <laughs> Even some of the, uh, I remember in the old TBS days, like Mike Jackson. Are you fucking kidding oh, me? Oh, yeah, yeah. That dude was freaking awesome, man. He was so awesome. And I remember as a kid thinking, he's awesome. He's so good, you know. But, it, it, you know, I, I feel like I was uh, a little smartened up before I ever got in the business. And I remember thinking, they're just not giving him the push because he doesn't have that look. And that's what it right. was. I mean, he didn't have the look, yeah. and I don't know. I don't know how he could talk. I don't, I don't think they ever let him do that. But um, man, what a fucking wrestler! I, I remember him and Ric Flair fucking having a great match on uh, TBS, and that's because Flair respected the fact that he was a damn carpenter. Yeah, and I mean that's that's pretty much it, man. I mean, you know, the, the respect there. If you're a guy in the business that can work with anybody, I mean, and trust me, trust me, I feel like this on myself that I have worked with people that are horrible, and I have yeah. made them look better, and at the same time, got myself over. Yeah. So next question. This is Tommy from Nashville. This is from Facebook. So do you think a non-luchador mask gimmick could and would work today? And what he means, I guess, is like the assassins or like, you know, the classic old school under a hood gimmick. Would it work today if, you know, full time? Anything can work if you do it the right way. Not sure why that would not work anymore. I mean, seriously, I mean, yeah. I, I think it would if you do it the right way. I mean, it's just the thing of it. I mean, ain't there the dude, I've seen him on, uh, oh, what is that show? The Luchador thing, Lucha Underground, with that crazy, cool demon mask. Are you talking about Luchasaurus that looks like a dinosaur? I think, huh? I think that might be the same. Okay, so yeah. why is not the modern-day mask? It is. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and, it over, yeah. and I think it's cool. I mean, like I said many times before, if I want to watch boxing or I want to watch UFC and see competitive, non-entertainment fight sports, that's what I'm going to watch. But if I want to see, unfortunately, what they call it, sports entertainment, and that's what I want to see, man. I want to see masks. I want to see... Uh, people doing over-the-top shit with over-the-top looks. Man, when uh, Rampage Jackson, he was a wrestling fan. He's from Memphis and used to come out with a mask on and all that kind of stuff. And I totally appreciated that. I was like, yeah, thanks, man. (laughs) I was like, thanks, dude. Because Mm -hmm. he came out like, I love wrestling. And the guys that get it, Muhammad Ali got it, bro. Muhammad Ali got it. Totally. Yes. 
that's the thing, man. It's it like people will buy tickets for drama, even in the playoffs right now. They get all the drama. Okay, here's what's going on with this guy. Here's what's going on with this guy. Oh, and this guy, this guy. And right. it just builds the – it's ticket sales, man. And it, it, and it it used to be ticket sales more than it is now because everybody can watch it on TV or Internet or whatever. But that right. was the thing back in the day, man. Just get asses in the seats, man. Yeah. It went from how did the house do to how are the ratings. <laughs> right. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a great answer, and I agree. If anything's pushed properly, it'll work. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors, and we'll be right back with more live and in color with Wolfie D. Support for Live and in Color with Wolfie D is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFIE at manscaped.com. If my math's correct, that's about 8 million balls. So number 12, Zed Dog, 23-7. Do you see a time where women's wrestling could overtake men's? Maybe on a porn channel or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get letters for that one, but that's fine. I mean, they uh, are, <laughs> the, the women's wrestling from back in the day to now, it's obviously way better. And you got sure. way better looking girls. But uh, yeah. just something about it to me is like... Okay, they're pretty, but I'm right. not buying this. Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. I hate to say it, but I'm right there with you. I mean, on that. It's so hot and beautiful, but it's like nah. right. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, man. I I grew up on you know. You would randomly see uh, one of Moolah's girls versus you know the the quality of looks today is is you know, oh absolutely what, and, and the you first know. one on. In my childhood, that I remember, I was like, oh man, these girls can go. Because I used to hate watching that when I was a kid. The Jump Bomb Angels. They oh, yeah. were good. And oh. yeah, after that, it was like, man, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Russell and got the Wendy Richter and some of those. But nah, Jumping Bomb Angels were good. Yeah, totally. And, and you know, funny thing is, Wendy Richter was like one of the original Montreal screw job. Not that she was in Montreal, but she got screwed out of the title by Moolah when they were going to get rid of her, basically. So anyway, I've heard Moolah was pretty hardcore, man. I've heard she was got some stuff in her past. I don't, you know, know if you're an expert on fabulous I watched, I watched the Dark Side of the Ring thing. I mean, I didn't know that. And again, yeah. it goes to the business and where I was, I mean, the only inside stuff you heard was on the sheets. And so, yeah, I don't I don't really know, man. But right. it so goes back to just how the wrestling business was back then, man. Tojo used to beat the shit out of fucking guys that he was training with a, a kendo stick. Like, for real, beat right. him up. And didn't smart right. him up until way later. Many guys didn't get smartened up until... Their first match. I mean, it's like, it's yeah. just how it was back then. And it's like the whole world now is different. It's just different. Right. right. It is sports uh, entertainment. It's not yeah. used to be. And no, that's not, not a bad thing. That's not a good thing. I mean, it just is what it is. It's much more a fight from an action movie now. Yeah. I think I've heard you say that before, actually. So I'm stealing that from you. <laughs> you steal it. But that, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. Okay, so number 13, at Leftover from Twitter. So would you rather have a singles run, whether you're Slash, Wolfie D, or Warren Wolf, or whatever, versus Randy Savage, like a good long run versus Randy Savage as a single, or a run against LOD with PG-13? Basically, Leftover sounds like he's listened to the show. He figured out, hey, you've had your Randy Savage, LOD fan, you know, would you rather have had an awesome run with PG-13 against them or, or Savage as a single? Mm, 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 mm. That's hard, man. That's really hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's tough because <laughs> as much as we have 
talked about each other or whatever lately. Jamie was a great partner. Great partner. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe if that would have been a thing, like on a big scale, yeah, that could have been a great thing. I yeah. really do believe that. Because yeah. we could work with anybody. I don't give a fuck who it was. Whatever style right. you are, we could work with you, we could do whatever. Uh, but at the same time, I also uh, like believe in myself in the fact that man, Randy was just I just really like that dude as a wrestler, and I think yeah. that my styles would have been good. And so, God, that's a hard question, but I'm gonna have to go with Road Warriors. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with that. I'm gonna have to go with that yeah. because I believe that Jamie would have added that extra bonus in there that like me as a singles, I have no doubt about my talent, but there's yeah. something about him together that could have made that shit really good. Yeah. 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 And somebody out there right now, I don't think he wants to listen to us, but somebody out there is listening to this show right now that has contact with Jamie Nundy, whether it's Jamie himself or his family or friends, let Jamie know we want to have him on this show. We want to have a sit down. We'd love to talk to him about the old days and we promise it'll be a fun time. And just let that be said. I think I can speak for you on that one. So, yeah, um, man, I, it, yeah. it hurts my, because like all the shit that's going on lately or whatever. I mean, I love right. Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Hey, I'm obviously a fan of Jamie because I'm a fan of PG 13. I'm a fan of you and never let it be said that on this show that we think anything bad of Jamie personal feelings aside with you, Wolfie, we would love to have him on the show. So have that word be put out there anyway. So number 14, Kenny from Cincinnati, Montreal screw job. Now I don't think it was a work because I just don't, think it was but at the same time do you think it was a work honestly like i mean i've seen the stuff on it i wasn't yeah. there then right and i'm telling you in this business especially then because yeah. if, if it were to happen now i promise you would know whether it was a work or not but right. back then think about the lawler kaufman that was Kay yeah. fade for how many years and then we got him right. on here and he talked about it blah 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 Anything in this business can be kayfabed. And yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't know what I've seen. I just, I don't know. It's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know enough people, I guess, that uh, were there or, or kind of know. It seemed like a work. Right. But then it also seemed like, yeah, they might have done that to him. So I don't yeah. know, man. Yeah. I don't, and then, yeah. it, that makes me, uh, it makes me sound like a fucking mark, but. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know enough people close enough to the issues, uh, and I haven't listened enough. You know, I don't really give a shit, but I just don't know. I don't know, and I know that things can uh, be kayfabe to the utmost in this business. Well, I mean, honestly, you guys came a hair of being there. You know, you know, y'all yeah, were, we were close. yeah, but not far off. One of those things where I, or maybe just me, where I didn't. I promise. When I was in the WWF, I just didn't really care about it. And even wrestling, I really didn't care about anything that was going on, but what I was doing and how I could contribute or anything like that. I, I really didn't want a lot of that other shit. I really did. Yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. myself get over. That's all I wanted. Right. Yeah. Now, that makes sense. What if it were you that it happened to? What if in the situation, maybe not even on that grand what? of a scale, but what if that were to happen to you? It's been uh, more than one time. It wasn't a freaking Montreal screw job, but I've had Frank Morrell used to, I don't think he liked me when I first started. And there's been times when it wasn't a finish and he counted me out like one, two, three real quick. And I'm right. like, what the fuck? Or he counted me out of the ring or something like that. Like, that's not the finish, Frank. And he used to do that to me. So, I mean, I've had shit like that. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that, to me, has to be frustrating if you're, you know, especially early in your career where you're building a name. I can't you remember. Know. It was it was a six-man tag, me, Jamie, and Jeff Jarrett, I think, against Bill and two other people or something. I don't know. Anyway, I was just doing the old, okay, we're the heels, and I'm coming in doing the old distract the referee 
fucking Frank just smacked me right in the face like so did he could. And, and this was when I was like 19. I was like, what the fuck, man? And then he counted me out. And I was like, what the fuck, man? So, yeah, yeah, I mean, things can happen out there that are not supposed to go the way it's scripted. But again, that was then. This is now. Everything's on TV. You didn't do shit like that on TV. You did it in house shows. You know, and it's a whole different yeah. ball game, man. Yeah, for sure. I just, uh, you know, that's a, a good question, interesting question. I've heard that Ric Flair said that he, you know, on his podcast recently, he said that it wasn't a work, that he knows enough people that have talked about it. But again, you know, Ric Flair could also be working us on that, you know, so who knows? Oh, no, man, the boys, man, you never know. Right. Honestly, if I have to give my opinion, and that's what you're asking, yeah, I'd say it was or just because of stuff I've heard, but I don't know. And and I gotcha. feel like if I said that, I'm being worked. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I thought well, Hoffman and Stillwater was a fucking shoot, so, yeah. No, yeah, no, dude. Fine. I mean, up until really the movie being made about Andy Kaufman was really when that came out that it wasn't a work. Right. I mean, you know, when they're reenacting it and saying, oh, okay, that, you know, that's about the time that I realized it wasn't work because, I mean, Lawler, that slap. I'll, that, I mean, that, no, I'll tell you, like we talked about when we interviewed him, that back suplex yeah. was a shoot back suplex. That shit hurts when you <laughs> land like that. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure. for a person I'm sure. that had ever taken that bump, I guarantee you it hurt him. I guarantee it. Yeah, I'm, hey, it had to. It had to. What a cool, legendary angle, though, man. Golly. Yeah. One of the greatest of all time. And, and at Lawler being on our show, said that was his favorite angle that he ever worked. And I mean, think of all the amazing angles he did. And that's the okay. one. I mean, anyway. Well, okay. So this leads us to our very last question of this version of Ask Wolfie D Anything Part 3. Uh, this is from at GFunk. 10 on Twitter. And basically, he is asking, in your opinion, what is the greatest match of all time? Not your match, but as a fan watching wrestling, what is your favorite match of all time? Well, I'll tell you the things that I watch the most, everybody says it. Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat was incredible. Yeah. I also really liked her. Please, Hernandez versus Billy Jack Haynes. And I think both oh, of those were rusty. I can't remember. But yeah, those two WrestleMania matches were awesome to me. And I, I really watched, for some reason, I don't know, I just, I was so impressed by the way Billy Jack and Hercules lifted each other. And those are not little dudes, man. Just no. pressed each other. That was something cool to me. I always, I always loved the Gorilla Press Slam. And uh, yeah. in my career, there's only a few people I could do it to, but... <laughs> <laughs> How many times has it been done to you? <laughs> Back and forth with the girl at press and, and all that. I don't know. I just, I like that, man. Um, and it's funny because I've told you I love the Road Warriors and stuff, but I don't think there's a match they had that was just like, oh, that was the greatest match. I just like right. them as characters or whatever, and the way they beat the shit out of people. And, yeah. uh, but no, the Randy Savage, uh, Ricky Steamboat, WrestleMania three. Obviously, everybody talks about it and how Randy scripted it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but also, Hercules and Billy Jack was over with me. Yeah. To me, I know you you know Billy Jack, but at the same time, did yeah. you ever know Hercules at all? No, I never met Hercules. Uh, Billy Jack came into USWA uh, in the mid-90s there. Weird dude. Yeah. And, and we've all seen his uh, shoot interviews. Very weird. Dude, <laughs> right, right. Got, met him. Uh, but the funniest thing to me was his laugh. I mean, you see this big masculine man, and he goes, <laughs> 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 "It was very funny." Yeah, dude, what a cool gimmick was that Hercules gimmick, though. I mean, Billy Jack. Obviously, we know that was from the Billy Jack movie, but Hercules, what a cool gimmick that was, man. I, I loved it, especially when he was in that, like, you know, the LJN rubber figures we had when they were kids. Yeah, I remember the Hercules figure came in that brown leather Hercules looking gimmick. I don't know what you would call it. It was like a suit or outfit or something, yeah. but as, as he hardly cool, ever wore that. Yeah. I just, uh, as a kid, 
there's those certain people that like, even though I, I knew at a pretty early age they were working, but there's yeah. just a certain guy and you go, that motherfucker's bad. And Hercules yeah. will know. And that chain, man, oh, dude, his whole gimmick was so cool. Honestly, didn't get enough props. And honestly, there have been a lot of imitations of him as well in the later years that, to me, didn't yeah. get anywhere near the quality of his gimmick. So, anyway, uh, that, that's cool, man. I mean, the, the Randy Savage, if you can still watch that match and, like, feel like a little kid, I think that tells you that that match is one of the greatest of all time. Absolutely. From what I've heard... It's- and you've probably heard this too, Ricky Steamboat. And they said they had like, okay, this part, go to this part, and then go to, and it was like three notebooks full. Of- yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, because up until that time, I don't think that ever happened. And to be honest with you, I never knew that up until the hell, I mean, in the past 10 years or something like that. And I actually, when the Rock and Roll Express and us worked at the Louisville Gardens on the, I forget what they call the show, Remember the the Gardens or something like that. Night of Legends or something. Something, Something, I don't know. When they put us over, I came to them. I only had three pages, and it was finished. And I I went to Randy, and I this is what I want to do. And I typed it out. I can't remember how I typed it out back then, but I typed it out and there were three pages. I handed it to him. I'll never forget Ricky looked at me and he was like, <laughs> back then, things like that weren't a thing. And it's funny that he did that when I was a kid and then I give it to Ricky and then they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been able to manage against Ricky in his later years, obviously. And I've managed different people against him. It wasn't a ton of matches, but it was a few. And Ricky, every time he would go, just before we went out there, he would tell the guy he was working, hey, just don't hurt me. We'll go easy, we'll go good, but just don't hurt me. Did he yeah. say that as well back then? Absolutely. Him and yeah, I mean, Buddy, Buddy Landell used to tell me, <laughs> Buddy's thing was, watch the hair, brother, watch the hair. He didn't watch <laughs> his, his hair. <laughs> I mean, that hair was pretty well manicured, though, you know, as far as yeah. it goes. That was, that was some watch good hair. hair. Yeah. You get him in the yeah. corner, second rope punches. Watch the hair, brother, watch the hair. <laughs> yeah, I love it, I love it. All right, cool. Well, coming up, we've got Current Affairs, sponsored by Coach's Corner Sports Grill. DJ, hit the music. It's a current affair. It's a current affair. Love it in color. It's a current affair. Love it in color. All right, we're back with Current Affairs. Today, we've got three good current questions you know wrestling is like the real world there's news every day going on it's just i try to pick some of the better ones or some of the ones that just might be interesting the first one we've been talking about him all show really but recently uh on twitter ricky morton announced that 2022 would be the final year for the rock and roll express to focus on teaming with carrie his son and you know that kind of thing what do you think man isn't that crazy i i just thought they would wrestle forever (laughs) Well, I mean, like I said, I mean, both those guys are older than me, and I I think i got one left in me, (laughs) and uh, so I don't know how they're still going. I really don't, but, I mean, I get it. He wants to push his son, so that's cool. Yeah, and that makes sense, and, you know, maybe when it time comes for your boy to be old enough, he'll be Wolfie D. Jr. someday. Who knows? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll see where that is. But hey, speaking of your comeback, you know, February fifth, Oman Arena, Jackson, Tennessee, tagging with Jerry the King Lawler. Everybody go get your tickets now. You know, you'll get to see Wolfie and all the stars. So anyway, I mean you may not have any insight on this at all, but do you think it's Robert that's essentially retiring or do you feel like Ricky is gonna kinda start more along managing Carrie? I mean, mm-hmm. is that kind of just a- total guessing. Yeah. I would just think Robert's done, man. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I know how I feel at my age, and these guys are 
shit, almost right. 20 years older than me, I think. So, hey, man, I get it. Hell, I, I walked outside in the snow today and I almost slipped and I uh, break something again. <laughs> oh, man, don't do that. Got too many big things coming up. So, anyway, you know, you think about it. They're like the last of a whole bunch of tag teams that, you know, just unfortunately aren't here anymore. You know, you've lost Bobby. We lost Animal. You know, Hawk, of course, had passed a few years before that. There's so many tag teams from that amazing era that just mm-hmm. can't be together anymore because they're not with us anymore, you know? So it's amazing from what I've heard, the Wreck and Roll Express, they, they lived their life to the fullest, though, from what I've heard. So That's good on them. All right. So our second question with current affairs is Booker T recently quoted, basically, this is kind of coming off of the Mickey James being in the Royal Rumble. There's rumors that the heavyweight champion from Impact, his name is Moose. He is possibly trying to work an angle to where he would get a match against Roman Reigns. So basically, your Impact champion and Roman, you know, your heavyweight champion from WWE, there's only one way that ends, though, right? There's no way that Vince lets Moose go over on his champ, right? There's no way that would Uh, I wouldn't think so. But again, man, wrestling business is different than right. when I was in it. I, and it's just hard to call that stuff because I don't watch it. Like, you know that. Yeah. You know that. Oh, it's, it's hard to say. I don't know what they would do. I don't know what their yeah. angle is right now. You know, yeah. it's crazy. As a surprise entrant, I can almost see him entering the, the Royal Rumble or something. Who knows? Also, there's a rumor of Cody Rhodes possibly being in the Royal Rumble. I don't know if you've heard about this. I'm kind of killing an extra current affair here. Remember, but. They let his contract expire with AEW. And again, yeah. that's one of the things you just don't know, man. I mean, and, and, right. and I don't contact with these people. I don't keep in touch with hardly anybody. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. there could be a where, you know, he jumps, you know. You wouldn't think right. he would because he's kind of like the, the main guy that kind of got that going or whatever. But And you don't yeah. think that the on guy would let him go, but... Man, who knows, man? It's the wrestling business. It's a wacky world. It is. The never-ending wacky world of wrestling. But anyway, we'll see on that one. All right. Our last current affair, we're going to wrap it up for the day. This one may make you laugh. This one may not surprise you. But Sonny recently was arrested for making a terroristic threat and weapons charges. There were no further details at the time. Man. I've seen that. Look, I'm going to tell you, I'm not a fan of hers. I, right. Uh, before I got in the business, visually, very pretty woman. Today, right. she's not a pretty person, man. And right. I've been around. I just really don't like her. But yeah, I think yours is based off of the way she treated Chris. And yeah, yeah that's absolutely. Legit. But I've also been in a dressing room with her where she just, she's not like a, a cool person. She's really not. Right, right. And some people might say that about me if they've been around me when I'm not not doing my best. I'll put it like that. Sure. Maybe she wasn't doing her best, but I know the way she treated him, and I also yeah. know the way she has talked to me in the past and things like that. So, yeah, I'm not a yeah. fan. Well, so who knows? Maybe the terroristic threat isn't that all surprising. No, so. it's, it's probably her freaking out. She's probably drunk or something, and yeah, I'm going to stab yeah. you. Because, I mean, it doesn't sound like a terroristic threat to me. It sounds yeah. like... She told her boyfriend she's stabbing with scissors. That's what it sounds like to me, but whatever. <laughs> if <laughs> you can't hold her up. but I get it. Yeah, yeah I guess. I guess. Yeah. Anyway, who knows I, about I, that one? He's, uh, I can hold my own on that, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, if you let someone stab you then you're and you're not going to fight back, then, you know, maybe you deserve the yeah. terroristic threat. But anyway, yeah, exactly. we'll leave it at that. Well, well that is it for the day. Yeah, Current Affairs is now over. So, you know, Wolfie, thank you for answering all these questions. Some were ridiculous. Some were awesome. We had a lot of fun. You know, keep us in mind. Pint Size All-Stars Pro Wrestling Loot. Contact Wolfie for those pro wrestling tees. Also, don't forget the awesome 8 by 10s that he has. He can pretty much, if, if there's a picture of it, he can get you a signed autograph with that picture. So even if you have a special request, send a picture to him and we'll see what we can do to make that happen for you to get that signed. He, honestly, just thank him you know, so much for listening. You guys are what makes us do this every week. And thank you for being a part of that with us. Send us home, Wolfie. Thank you guys again. Like Jimmy just said, thank Thank you, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. If you want to sponsor, if you want to donate, help us out. It'll keep it going. If you like it, donate, help us. 
and uh, go to Pro Wrestling Tees, uh, Live It In Color, Wolfie D, or hit me up on Facebook and get some of these pint-sized all-stars. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You can contact us there or anywhere. We'll make sure you get in touch with him. Other than that, thank you all for listening. Live It In Color with Wolfie D. Thanks, Thanks man. Out. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all. And all they ask is, give me back my pro wrestling. Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at GeneJacksonPod.com. That's right, it's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, They can find me on Facebook. Uh, My personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast, you have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah. And remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. I got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still lobbing in color. Don't rush your mother, utilize a hubcap. I'm like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD, and I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Title suck is taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Played low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over on board later. Not here to play games, so you better be real. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. Like the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When I finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. Driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby. Huh? I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome.
got a cap for your tone. We got a cap for your tone. This has been a James Rock Street production.